Welcome to Digital Learning, an initiative of Directorate of Collegiate Education, Government of Karnataka. Learning from first generation school goers, uh, part or excerpt of the essay written by Dr. R. Balasubramaniam is prescribed for third semester general English BCom affiliated to Bengaluru North University. I am Nandana NG, Assistant Professor of English, Government First Grade College, Bagipalli. In the previous session, in the previous two sessions, in fact, the introduction to the author and introduction to the lesson has been dealt with in detail and uh, also the difficult words pertaining to the text have been explained in detail so that the student will have better information to understand the text. Once you are familiar with the meanings of difficult words, you can understand the con context of the lesson also in a much better position. Now let us have a look at the contents of this particular session. The contents are as follows. First, learning objectives. The objectives which the students can expect in through the course of this session. Session outcome. Whether the objectives have been dealt with comes under session outcome or what is it that the student can look forward at the end of the session. The main part of the content will be the contextual interpretation of the lesson wherein the entire lesson will be dealt or discussed in detail. Through the course of the lesson, we will see two prominent incidents involving the tribal child, how the child shows more significance than the teacher in question. And then we shall also discuss the tone of the speaker. What is it the speaker that he is trying to say and what were his thoughts and how his thoughts have changed through the course of the lesson also can be seen. Finally, we shall have a small multiple choice question session so that we can assess the knowledge that we have gained. Learning objectives. The student can think of developing sensitivity towards social problems and concern towards society. This lesson in particular should serve as a role model to all the youngsters the because here in this lesson there is a small tribal child hardly seven years old the maturity and sensitivity sensitivity displayed by the child should serve as a lesson to not only the students but also the teachers for that matter and this session will help us to develop sensitivity towards the prevalent social problems and also cultivate concern towards society it also throws upon throws light on the debate on the contemporary education system the present education system somewhere is lagging behind because more emphasis on books or the bookish knowledge as a result students miss out on the skills or the survival skills that is required here in this lesson we have a 7 year old tribal boy who has so much of knowledge outside the box that even the teacher feels the boy is in fact more knowledgeable than all of them and then this session also will help the student to ascertain the importance of nurturing nature without nature humankind will perish so in this lesson we'll see the significance of nature how the school is actually set in the midst of nature as the college school building had not yet come up they had to actually start the classes in a cow shed and there within nature how the teaching continued and how nature actually taught them the importance of it in humankind can also be seen. It will also help the student to assimilate the value of human relationships. Through the seven year old tribal boy Manju, the value of human relationships can be clearly seen. Session outcomes. At the end of the session, the students are able to enrich their cultural and literary sensibilities and foster cross-cultural understanding. It will also help the student to acquire maturity to critically analyze the importance of education and schooling by life. It will also help the student to live in harmony with nature and the forest and respectfully accept what it offers. Mother Nature is a very benevolent uh, mother like any other mother for that matter but like all the children in fact all the human beings are bent upon exploiting the mother for their own personal desires as a result mother nature is now furious and she is trying to vent her anger or frustration through the means of natural disasters maybe if we learn to accept that without nature mankind will perish and we learn to live in harmony with nature and forest then our life will be much better 
all of this in turn will enhance the vocabulary, word power and also strengthen linguistic skills of the student. Contextual interpretation of the lesson. In the introductory part to the author, we read about R. Balasubramaniam being a medical doctor by profession. Though being a medical doctor, yet since his childhood, he always had a social concern or that endeavor to do something for society. In fact, as young as 19 years old, he started inspired by the teachings of Swami Vivekananda. He started the Swami Vivekananda Youth Movement. And uh, after his return to India, he thought of doing something or doing something productive. And as and the school was the result of his endeavor. The school was started in Hosahalli in a small hamlet called Brahmagiri in 1988. This school was particularly for the tribal children. The, these learned men, uh, around four or five of them, they came together, they came up with this idea of starting a small school so that the tribal children are included in the mainstream. They also get the education that the children in the mainstream are getting and in turn education will life, make their lives better. After getting those children to school, it was quite difficult convincing the tribal people to send their children to school. Somehow in the first batch, the teachers were successful enough to get 28 students for the first batch. But then after getting the students to school, now it was the responsibility of the teachers to make sure that the children do not return hungry. So to retain their interest, to sustain their interest along with academic sessions, the idea of a midday meal also was initiated in the school. As funds were much difficult to go by, they had to make do with whatever was available. So midday meal was more like a base to go closer with the students and it was also a great fun with all the responsibilities being shared between the children. The teachers and the uh, students would discuss as, the, as to what the menu would be and usually the menu in the midday meal would be ragi balls and sambar and so to prepare that a few of the children would go to the forest to fetch firewood while a few more students would collect whatever vegetables were available and chop them and start preparing the sambar and a few more children would uh, prepare ragi balls. In one sentence he says a few children with their small hands would mold the ragi into small balls. It just shows how the children enjoyed the activity, even the teachers were involved. While after all the uh, lunch was over, after the day, midday meal was over, a few more children took the responsibility of cleaning up also. This in fact midday meal took much longer time than the academic sessions but then the author admits, he says that it was actually a fun experience as the students and teachers were involved and they got to understand the students much better. Two incidents play a very vital role to understand the importance of life while schooling of the tribal children. The first incident is Manju's preparation of ragi balls. During one of these days, uh, there is one incident which the author recollects after these many years. He says one day, uh, one of the students, a seven-year-old boy, a tribal boy called Manju, uh, it was his responsibility to prepare ragi balls for that day. Uh, on that day, the incident happened, the author observed that Manju came to school accompanied by his kid sister Sunanda. The moment the author saw Manju walking along with Sunanda into the campus, the first thought that came into the author's mind was one more mouth to feed. In fact, that the, the idea just came up into his mind that now that one more child has come, uh, so more food will be required. But then he does not voice it aloud. He just wanted to see what Manju will do. And, to, and today was Manju's responsibility to prepare 28 ragi balls. But then during lunch time, as the author was observing Manju, Manju had prepared only 28 ragi balls and this surprised the author and uh, he further saw that Manju made his kid sister Sunanda sit next to him. He made her sit there and from his own plate he took he divided the ragi ball that was his in his plate into two and gave one portion to his sister to eat. When Manju displayed such mature behavior the author was taken aback. After lunch, he called Manju and he asked him, Your sister had come today. Why didn't you prepare one more ragi ball? You could have prepared 29 ragi balls. 
Manju's reply still resonates with the author after all these years. Manju is a small seven-year-old boy, yet the answer he gave to the author had such profound wisdom. He said, my parents have gone out today to the local shandy to sell bamboo wear. As they were out of house, my kid system, kid sister was my responsibility. But then I did not want to miss school also, so I brought her to school. But now that she is my responsibility, I don't want others to bear her burden. If I prepare one extra ragi ball, then I will be literally taking the food from my friend's plates and I do not want to do that. So, as she is my sister and my responsibility, I will share the food with her. I don't expect my friends to part way with their food. When Manju said the simple answer, the author was taken aback. In fact, tears came down his eyes. While Manju was surprised, as to what did I say and why is the teacher reacting this way. But then as an adult, the teacher realized how he always thought someone else is to be blamed for our misfortune. While here was Manju who felt that as the small, uh, he himself is a small boy and the small girl, his younger sister is his responsibility. He did not even put the burden on anybody. Such maturity on Manju's part shows that the tribal people are in harmony with nature. Sharing and caring seems to be an integral part of their culture. This incident contributes a lot of wisdom and this a lot of learning through life experience can be seen here. Uh, the first instance probes into the education versus schooling. Yes, it's true. Sharing with others. This is something Manju has learned on his own. Till that point, he had never access to any formal education. Then how did he come to learn this concept of sharing the food with his sister? The tribal children should not unlearn what they have already learnt at the cost of education. So the author has realized that already the tribal children have vast amount of uh, schooling, education or experience there. They should just enhance it. They should not force the children to unlearn it. The second incident also throws light on the vast knowledge of the forest and nature of the children of indigenous communities. As Manju belongs to the Adivasi community which stays within the forest, they are very familiar with the forest, the local uh, trees etc. But then Manju is not a botanist. He hasn't been to school or college to have so much of knowledge about forest and trees. But yet, with from his parents and from his community interaction, he has so much of knowledge that the teacher is surprised. In the second incident, the, at one point, all the children were getting restless after cleaning the campus for a long time. So one of the teachers came up with the idea of asking the students to go and count all the trees on the campus. So another teacher added, why only count? They can also get one leaf each from every tree that they find. So the teachers were of the opinion that this activity will uh, preoccupy the children and they will be engaged for more than one hour. And as expected, all the children went in different directions and after an hour or so, they started trickling back towards the campus. But then uh, the teachers were uh, surprised or astonished when they saw a few students carrying 20 leaves, 30 leaves. In fact, a few students had also brought back 50 leaves from 50 different trees. But the most surprising aspect was of Manju who had got 70 leaves from 70 different trees. And not only that, he was able to show each and every leaf and actually give the name of the tree to which it belongs. All this knowledge coming from a seven-year-old boy, the teachers were completely taken aback. So the second incident to count the trees and get a leaf from each tree of the campus shows the deep knowledge that Manju had about the forest. And this knowledge he had got from his own community or from his own parents and community interaction. In fact, Manju surpasses everybody when he even mentions the tare leaf, that particular leaf which drinking the water of that from that leaf will lead to temporary insanity. So much of knowledge coming from an innocent seven-year-old boy, the author can never forget what he heard that day. So it shows that the tribal children needed schooling along with their life schooling. So whatever knowledge that they already have, it just needs to be enhanced through the course of this formal education. The tone of the speaker. 
the interaction with the tribal communities has more lessons than the textbooks yes the speaker is very clearly showing that how the tribal communities have more knowledge than what is uh, displayed in the textbook uh, through the course of the lesson and with these two incidents prominent incidents the two incidents being the first incident of the midday meal and the second incident of collecting leaves an insight into the value system is given by the simple tribal children these children also are like any other normal children but their life lifestyle is very simple but yet the knowledge they have already gathered is very immense the tribal children's wisdom educates the author to unlearn the selfishness in fact during the midday meal incident the author had reacted in a selfish manner when he felt in his mind that one more mouth to feed but then manju did not have that such uh, idea whatever he had brought his sister and he had shared the food with her he had not uh, passed the burden on anyone it also helps us to understand that each person has a teacher in him this is something that we have to accept even basavanna says this for that matter every person has a teacher so everybody should be willing to learn only then we will be able to accept whatever the person gives us the values constitutes a greater part of education that the lessons contained in textbooks yes in the greater part of education that the lessons contained in textbook are very important a struggle to retain their identity values ethos and their natural knowledge can be seen the tribal people or the adivasis struggle a lot to retain their identity the values mauliyagalu ethos and their natural knowledge that they have accumulated over the course of generations the chi- tribal children in turn are taught indigenous or local knowledge values and philosophy which are not found in any of the formal modern textbooks so the tone of the speaker ends with this where he says let the schooling should not interfere the with the tribal children's inherent education yes whatever knowledge or wisdom the tribal children already have that should not be erased or made to be unlearned in fact whatever knowledge they already have it should be further enhanced through the course of this mainstream education let us try to recapitulate what we have learned through the course of this session in this lesson first first generation school goers the author narrates the introduction of a school in the tribal community how his endeavor of starting a school for the tribal children was quite successful initially they faced a lot of struggle but now it is a successful school it focuses on the importance of indigenous knowledge values ethos and philosophy and is on par with the school education yes contempt for local knowledge will lead us nowhere because wisdom or knowledge is always useful what the other person knows we might not be aware of we should never may have that contempt or feeling of contempt for that here the tribal knowledge is actually or philosophy is on par with the formal or school education the formal school provides an opportunity to acquire skills to integrate with mainstream society it should not be at the cost of making the tribal children unlearn what they already know but whatever they have learned it should be retained and more knowledge should be added to that schooling should not interfere with inherent education and there are two prominent incidents in the lesson which portray the tribal children's values and the vast knowledge of the nature and the forest that they have accumulated through the course of their lifetime let us assess ourselves with the help of the multiple choice questions the hosahalli school had its beginning in the options are open space building cow shed or stable and the answer is the hosahalli school had its beginning in c cow shed second question who had come with manju that day remember the first incident the midday meal incident so who had come with manju that day the options are uncle brother cousin or sister and the answer is option d sister question number 3 manju prepared dash balls obviously manju prepared how many balls the options are 30 28 20 or 26 and the answer is option b 
28. This is something to be applauded. He did not prepare an extra ragi ball for his sister, but he shared his own food with his sister. Next question. Manju's parents had gone to the local weekly market to sell dash vegetables, glossary, bamboo ware or fruits and the answer is option C bamboo ware. Fifth question Manju had brought dash leaves. This question pertains to the second incident of collecting leaves. How many leaves had Manju brought? 60, 72, 65, 70 and the answer is Manju had brought 70 leaves. References for this session. Thank you.